Hey everybody. Um, so I don't know how many of you uh, came here because of the email list that Rob had, but on that it said that I was going to be talking about some circuits that I made for the Commodore 64 computer tonight. Um, <coughs> and when I dug those circuits out and looked at them, they were actually pretty lame and unimpressive, so I was like, uh, what, would, what would go along with uh, some rapid prototyping stuff? So uh, I brought in this, which is <coughs> a rig that I made that I use for capping plastics. So tonight I'm going to talk about how you can cap plastics, which is sort of, which is related to rapid prototyping in the sense that uh, it's fabrication that you can do as a single person. Um, it's also something that you can do to make many parts from one part. Um, however, it's much more old school than, uh, than rapid prototyping. So, um, there's a couple things that I'm going to do tonight. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is show you how to make the easiest plastic part that you could possibly make in your house. And this, uh, this is probably what most of you are looking at right now, and this is, uh, this is a heated pressure chamber. Um, and what this is mostly used for, um, is turning on the <laughs> which is good at. I don't know actually how to deal with this right now. But, uh, um, Anyway, this is kind of fun for doing casting at home necessarily. Um, what's really, really good for is getting really, really clear parts, really, really shiny parts, really, really professional parts, but you can make really, really ghetto parts uh, at a fraction of the cost and time. Um, so, anyway, this is the pressure chamber. I'll talk more about this in a minute. Uh, over here, there's an assortment of different kinds of silicon rubber molds. Um, there's different kinds of rubbers that I've used. Uh, there are two part molds, like this one. Um, which is a gang mold that you can use to make lots of parts at a time. Um, <coughs> there are some things that I've cast or other people have cast. Um, I can pass some of that stuff around uh, and will. Um, over here are all sort of various noxious chemicals and small tools that uh, you would use to actually do casting. Okay, so what do you need to do casting? Um, you need three things. You need a positive or a part that you're going to make a mold of, and that part is um, that's what you're going to be eventually replicating in your mold. So, for instance, um, this is a molded part. I'm going to start passing these around as I talk about them a little bit. Um, I'll tell you something experimental. Some of them are. Um, so this looks like this is a uh, I work at a toy company, uh, and this is some a friend of mine cast this part, but it's um, a playing piece from a game board uh, that's made out of plastic. It's sort of like ABS, if you guys know what that is. Um, but this is the positive that he made for it. He made this out of real ABS, <coughs> out of a bunch of fancy machines, um, and then set up a silicon rubber mold such that he could pour a liquid into it and get lots and lots of parts out that are like this. So the first thing you need is something like this. Uh, is a positive from which you're going to pull your final parts from. So this is the positive. This is the cast piece. You can do this cast piece. They're not, mm, these actually are similar. They're, this didn't come from this, but uh, this made a block that was a lot like this. So the first thing you need is a positive. Um, once you have your thing that you want to cast, then you make the mold. And the mold is like this. Like, uh, for instance, um, I don't know how many of you out there are familiar with the role-playing game world, but uh, <laughs> this is a point I'm willing to bet everybody. <laughs> Uh, so this is a, everyone knows what this is, right? <laughs> Did that be in a D20 or a D20? It is a D20, yeah. Um, this is a very fancy schmancy D20 that I cast for uh, this art project. There are no, does anyone have a black light with them? It's handy in their bag. <laughs> black you <laughs> Silicon rubber is most often with small mold making 
uh, what you what you use to make your mold on it because it's really, really, really tough stuff and it holds detail incredibly well. If you make a positive, if you make a perfectly mirror polished positive and put a single fingerprint on it, this stuff will totally pick up that fingerprint and put it on your final part and it's totally amazing. And you can pull, I can, I pulled over 100 parts out of this mold and I can pull easily 100 more before I would have to shoot this mold again. So, um, Anyway, uh, I'm going to pass on the D20 in this mold. Try not to get too many fingerprints in this because I'm going to use it later. I guess it's something like that. It's <laughs> It's really heavy stuff. And there's different kinds of silicone rubber. They're all uh, cured with various <coughs> expensive metals. That's a platinum cure mold, so there's a little bit of platinum in it, so it's not, it's not crazy cheap. This is a tin cure mold. Uh, tin is a lot cheaper than platinum, so this yellow shit is, uh, is the cheap stuff. I cast a unicorn in this because I have it laying around. <laughs> Um, do you use smooth on or a different place? I don't generally use smooth on, but I'm going to use it tonight because it's uh, the cheapest thing you can do <laughs> to make a plastic part. And it's also really fast and really forgiving. Um, Alright, so thing one, you need your positive. You need your D20 or your weird block that's getting passed around. Uh, thing two, you need your mold, which looks like this unicorn shaped negative. Um, and thing three, you need your plastic that you're going to make the final part out of. Um, so, there's a million, billion kinds of plastics out there that you can use to make, uh, what I've done with this spiel, I'm going to actually make something, it'll all just look a lot more obvious, but, um, <clears throat> there's a bunch of different kinds of plastics that you can use, depending on what your final goal is. Um, some plastics are more expensive than others, some can be machined afterwards, like, a lot of the time things don't come out of the mold perfect. Um, in fact, you'll see uh, from that dust that you can totally see the mold marks. You can see where the pore spot was, you can see the flash where the mold separate uh, is on that. Um, so sometimes it's nice to work with them. Some plastics you can work with easily, some are huge pain in the ass to work with, some are clear, some are flexible, um, some take some kinds of pigments, some, some don't, some take other kinds. <clears throat> There's lots of different kinds of plastics you can use. Uh, so, um, Tonight, I'm going to use a few different kinds. Uh, first thing I'm going to use is something called Smooth Cast, which is made by Smooth On. It's a really, really cheap plastic that sets up really fast. And it doesn't really need to be cured under pressure at all. Um, and it's great for, like, it's great for if, you don't, if you just want to make something out of plastic, or you're trying to clean out mold, or you need to make a lot of stuff really fast. Smooth On's really great for that. Um, I'm also going to make some stuff. Rob said this is going to be like a cooking show, but, uh, um, so I'm gonna, right now, as soon as I'm done with this particular spiel, I'm going to make something, uh, some of um, and to show you how easy it is. You guys can all come up and take a look at that when that happens. And then, uh, as soon as I'm done with that, I'm going to actually, this is, um, you guys should look at this issue very carefully. It's really fragile. Uh, I made this thing before I came here today. I was like, what do I want to make lots of things out of, uh, and I was like, well, gosh, it'd be great to have some glow-in-the-dark knobs, too, for all the electronic stuff that I built. So I, uh, <clears throat> I had these fancy, fancy machined aluminum knobs that I'm going into, um, and I made this thing, which is a box that I'm going to turn into a silicon rubber mold. So take a look at this. Don't drop it. Um, and then when I'm done with that, I'm going to go into the pressure chamber, um, and uh, it's going to stay in the pressure chamber. Um, until Chris is done talking, and then uh, at the end of that, I'm going to open the pressure chamber. If any of you are still here, you can see what the mold looks like when it's done, and then we can pour something clear in that, and that would theoretically be really, really cool. So, uh, 